Deuteronomy chapter 22. Just one verse, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. As a lost man, I enjoyed Monty Python. As a lost man, I enjoyed the kids in the hall. Never did get in uh, into that, uh, what's that guy's name? Tyler Perry. Never got into that. But yeah, I thought it was funny, you know, guys dressing up like women for comedy sketches and stuff like that. It's an abomination. It's an abomination. This has not changed. This crosses dispensational lines. So when you have a man dressing up as a woman, or a woman dressing up as a man, it's an abomination in the sight of the Lord. Okay? It's an abomination. And go to Jeremiah. Please, please, get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures to Jeremiah chapter 6. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along, okay? Jeremiah chapter, this is not, this is, this is disturbing and, vex, and a vexation, like the warning before this starts. You know, you, this is very vexing. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 15 on, verse 17. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither... Neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, sat the Lord. Thus sat the Lord. Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk. Therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. And hence comes into play when the Lord tells Jeremiah, Pray not thou for these people, because they are so far gone, they have made their choice, and they're, they're not coming back. They're not coming back. It's sad. It's, it's disgusting. It's disturbing. Jonathan Jolly. Now, to make intentions clear, go to the book of Hosea. The book of Hosea. Okay? The book of Hosea is immediately after the book of Daniel. The book of Hosea, chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 5. Say ye unto your brethren, Amen. And to your sisters, Rohuma, plead with your mother. Plead. Now, this is not a, oh, please. It's a, as a lawyer in court. Okay? You got to remember. Because a lot of people, when the Lord, when it says the Lord will plead with you, they want you to believe that there's this image of this weeping Jesus who's, oh, what? No. No. No, 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 no. It says pleading as in a lawyer in court would plead. Here are the charges against you. What are you going to do about it? Here are, here are your charges. According to the scripture, guilty, 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 guilty. 
What are you going to do about it? Okay? That's what the plead is. Okay? Plead with your mother. Plead, for she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. And there are some people out there, some of these Muslim twits who say, will come to this and say, God's against women. Okay. God, uh, the whole thing about Gomer and Jose here was it was um, he was making an example of how Israel is unto the Lord. Okay, it's not that God hates women. Okay, come on, come on. No, God does not hate women. This is an example. Jose and his relationship with Gomer was a picture of the relationship that Israel had with God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? God is not against women, all right? This right here, he is talking in the deeper sense of Israel, okay? All right, you got to remember that. Verse 4, let's read verse three, uh, 3 again. Lest I strip her naked, and set her as in the day that she was born, and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. Okay? Having no water, and out of your belly shall flow living water, right? Having no water, no sustenance. Okay? That water that flows from the Lord. All right? Okay? In the description, in the description, there will be a, a, a video link for you about, it's an allegory, where we address some of these Muslim arguments. Okay, but never mind, verse 4. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. For the mother hath played the harlot. The mother hath played the harlot. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. Shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. So, we see here, I will not have mercy upon her children, for they are the children of whoredoms. Why though? For their mother hath played the harlot. And you read, and what is that? Uh, what is that? I wrote that down. Revelation chapter 12. Okay? The woman that is being talked about in Revelation chapter 12 is not Mary. It's Israel. Okay? So right here, where it says, I will not have mercy upon her children, the her that's being spoken of is Israel. Okay? Israel. Well, it's literally talking about the children. Yes, but in a deeper sense, it is for a picture of Israel and how they treated the Lord God. Okay? You have to understand that. All right? All right? So the parents, because they had messed up their children, Okay? But Hosea 4, Hosea chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 14. My people ask counsel at their stocks, at their stocks. And yes, you can go ahead and uh, bless your hearts, and I don't mean that, I do not mean that in the southern way. Uh, you could be a smart Alex about it, yeah, the stock market. Exactly. You're right. Amen. Yeah. The people ask counsel at their stocks because their God is mammon. My people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err and they have gone a whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills 
under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. Look at this. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For they for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that doth not understand, depart from evil, shall fall. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 Brett. That's a contradiction. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Okay? All right. The man is to be the head of the house. And that and the true head of the house is supposed to be the Lord. It goes. God, man, woman, child. Okay? The man is to be the head. Okay? The man is the head of the wife. Okay? The father is the head of the household. And uh and he is who is supposed to be the head of the father of the household is the Lord. Okay? All right? That's how that works. You women out there that take issue with that, your problem is not with what I'm saying. Your problem is with the Lord. Okay? Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve, ladies. Excuse me, women. Okay? Women. All right? But what has happened is the order has been perverted. And the father there, you know, this is very vexing. I want to just blow up at this guy and just, oh, but I can't. <laughs> I won't. These children... These children that this man has, he's leading them to hell. And this man, you can see this guy, this Jonathan, whatever his name is. Hey, Jonathan, you're going to hell, boy. May the fires of hell be upon you for what you're doing to these children. Brad, that's pretty. Look what he... Look at these shorts. This, okay, this channel is about a father, about a little boy who is now a little girl. All right? That's what this is about. And this guy, look at this, this scoundrel man. No kids allowed. Oh, isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? Yeah. And, oh, you could buy T-shirts and cups. In the cute, in the cute. But back to the shorts, okay. This little boy, I'm assuming his name is Ed or Edward. Okay, this is what he looked like. See that? See that? The uh, how it all started. Okay. Now breaking up with yourself. See that right here? See that? See that? Okay. You got this first video, the second one. That that's a little boy. That's a little boy. That's a little boy who's being made up to look like a little girl. And this fight, and I'm now, okay. And, th and there's the mother. And there's the father. And they're okay with this. They're okay with this. And look at this. And brethren, I'm sorry to vex you, but this, this, look at the, that was a close one. Look at that short. Look at that one. You got a little boy who looks like a little girl with the pride rainbow on there flipping the bird. And the father there. Now see, we got to remember something. That child, that child doesn't know any better. Because the ones that are supposed to be raising him
You see this? Do you see this? And and, and uh, let me see. I, I, I saw this last night because this guy has, what, almost a half a million subscribers. And I'm sure this guy gets quite a bit of heat. Uh, over a hundred million views. Jonathan Jolly YouTube channel is a fun place where place where Eddie, Emily, and Jonathan Jonathan make fictional videos and sometimes fun lifestyle videos. Fictional videos, okay. Now, okay, if this is a work of fiction, you're still parading your son as a little girl. It would take a drastic miracle from the Lord to get that father to repent. When, you're, when, you, when it reaches the level where a father is allowing his son, who probably ain't even 11 years old, to be visually prostituted as a little girl for entertainment's sake, you talk about, uh, oh wow, you talk about a line of no return, Jack. Wow. Wow. Pray not for these people. Hmm. Why? When you've reached this kind of level, could the father here be saved? Okay, yeah, sure. But it would have to take something drastic that the Lord himself could only provide. And you got to remember, salvation is not a thing of force. Okay? It's by his grace through our faith. Okay? He's not going to force it upon anybody. All right? Not at all. But again, I... This came up in a golden conversation I was having last night with a brother of mine, uh, my best friend. And, um, well, what is the extent of the sins? Look, look, this is a little boy. Okay, and if this is fictional, if this is, you know, if this is just, you're, you're dressing your little son up as a little girl. That's an abomination. Now, see, these kids, they don't know better. They think it's okay because mommy and daddy, supposed to be father and mother, but mommy and daddy are okay with it. And not only are they okay with it, they promote it and probably making, because I'm sure these, are, these videos, if you were to see them, are monetized. I'm sure they're making money at the expense of their children. And, and I mean, and I didn't even look at the videos, you know, but I mean, look at this stuff. Look, this is the sign of the times, brethren. And, and when did this guy come about? When did this, uh, 2007. So this guy's been around for a while. Okay. Oh, uh, just absolutely vexing. And we're, we're not going to have this up for that much longer, but I, uh, and, and people like this, okay, this little boy, this little boy, okay, this little boy, it started, he wanted to be a girl. They'll, they'll say stuff like, well, he was born that way. Uh, you know what, on that, um, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1. When you say, I was born that way, or you were born gay, or you were born a boy, but you were supposed to be born a girl, you know what you're doing? You're accusing God the Father. That's an accusation against God, as if God made a mistake. God doesn't make a mistake. Okay? God doesn't make a mistake like that. Okay. Jeremiah. 
chapter 1, just, just one verse, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Different dispensation, I know, but the, but the point is, when it comes to the fruit of the womb, there are no mistakes. God allowed the child to be born. Okay? The fruit of the womb is his reward. Why do you think I can't have children? And when you look at some of this stuff that, like this kind of stuff, praise the Lord. You know, those of you who have children, bless you and Lord bless you and praise the Lord for it. Me personally, I would have, I would have liked to have had children, but I can't. Okay? Because of what I did in my past life, I am, I'm sure of it. And the drugs that I had taken and the sin before my, uh, my Lord saved me. Okay? But see, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Well, that's talking just about Jeremiah. God knows the fruit of every womb out there. Okay? And male or female. Okay? All right? What is a male? Okay? Can you handle this? A male has a phallus, okay? And what about a female? She has, okay? A female is able to produce children because of the matrix, okay? You know, the ovaries and the eggs, which uh, Satan has turned into the symbol of the Trinity, okay? It's very simple, black and white, male and female. But to say that he was born that way. We are born in sin. Yes, we are. We're all born sinners. Yes, because of what Adam did. Yes. But that does not mean that in that sin that someone is born with the predisposition to be attracted to the same sex. No, that, that, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Okay? That's a lie. God doesn't make mistakes. And when you come around saying, I was born gay, or I should have been a woman, but I was born a man, you're, you're accusing God. Woe, woe, woe be to you. See, these children, they don't know. They don't know. But see, there's going to come a time when this Edie or Eddie is going to know. See, when it comes to judgment, because why? Why, brethren? Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. One, it's on this channel. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Okay? Romans chapter 14, verse 12. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Okay? There's going to come a time in the lives of these children of this wicked devil and Jezebel I might add where these children are going to hear the truth but see what is happening is this father and this mother are ingraining these children to when it reaches the point when they hear the truth of the gospel that their minds will already be so affected against it is it impossible for them? No, no, no. But it makes it that much more difficult for them. Why? Because of Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Okay? Creature of habit. Okay? Set in your ways. Okay? Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. 5 and 6. Thorns and snares 
are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Start him off early. That, 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 that poor child. That child, I bet, ain't even 11 years old. Introduced to the abomination of transgender and be that video that was a close call. I'm sorry to subject you to this, but look at this. This is the exploitation of children. Okay? This is pedophilia. This is grotesque. But yet the world applauds. And you too? Well, hey, hey, there are half a million subscribers. This is a cash cow for the, oh, the people at YouTube who are, have such moral standards, and yet they allow this tripe. I feel sorry for these kids because they're being brought up in abomination. And there isn't going to be anyone who's going to stand before the Lord and say, I didn't know. No, you're going to know sooner or later. These kids are going to hear the truth sooner or later. But see, because that, 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 that boy, he ain't even 11 years old. Okay, he's being brought up saying that what his dad, his father, saying it's okay and making abominable, filth little videos like this, thinking it's cute for a little boy dressed up as a little girl to be flipping the bird and the father is there along with it. <coughs> the, the, the generation people that is being brought up against God. Even so, come Lord Jesus. When you got this kind of stuff going on, but people, do you realize just how close we actually are? The redemption of the purchased possession could happen any moment, I believe. And we ought to live our lives as if it can. Okay? And yes, yes, brother, going to be doing a video on this one too. Okay? Yes, we are, if able, to help those who need it whether they be of us or of the world. Yes, yes. More on that in another video. But when you got generations, what, what's going to happen to this little boy when he gets to be in his teens? He's probably, obviously, going to be a sodomite. Probably. Because he's, he's, he's actually a little girl. Peace standing up. You know, I heard about how there was a Republican, a guy who wore his hair, who wears his hair like mine, <laughs> uh, who was on the floor shouting, hooting and hollering, and he talked about how the Democommies had given um, all like millions of dollars to LGBTQ stuff. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that the Republicans are any better, okay? They're both in the pocket of the Vatican. But the generations of children that are being brought up against God, okay? Against God, all right? At this point in their lives, if these children were to die, I believe that these children would still go to heaven. Even this this poor little boy who's being paraded around as a little girl. I believe even he would go to heaven because he doesn't know any better. He doesn't know any better. Okay? But see, that little boy. And that little boy will probably, because he's being brought up in such abomination, will understand a lot more sooner rather than later of what kind of abomination in the sight of the Lord he is involved in, probably a lot earlier in life than most, because of the level of the abomination. Our Lord is merciful. 
Our Lord is merciful. I personally don't believe this makes our father weep. I believe it really, really irritates him. And it would be a thing of mercy if the redemption of the purchase possession were to happen sometime soon and that little Eddie or Edward, whatever his name is, was taken up with us. It would be a thing of mercy. Okay? Because he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. But he's going to. He's going to. He's going to. Okay? He's going to. Now, uh, like I said, we're, we're not, and I'm sorry to subject you to this, but we're, we're not going to, we're not going to look at any of the videos or anything like that because it's just a vexation of spirit. Um, I just want this. Oh. Okay, that, that, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Turn in the authorized version of scriptures. To Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Jonathan Jolly is the fruit of generations removed from the God of Scripture. Removed from the God of Scripture and given a God who loves you unconditionally, who's not angry, who doesn't judge you. Okay? That's the fruit. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now, this is under the dispensation of the law. This is the law being given. In this dispensation, it was faith and works. you got to rightly divide the word of truth. The way that well, a man was made right under the law is different than it is today. That's what changes in the dispensations, okay? God himself does not change. But the, what changes is how God deals with man, Okay? That is rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? A way that one was made right, saved, in the Old Testament under the law is not the way that one is made right, saved today in this dispensation, okay? They are different. Why? Because Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, okay? And he shed his blood on the cross to make an atonement for sin, hence fulfilling the law, Okay? All right, so what changed was the crucifixion, all right? That is called rightly dividing the word of truth, which Christianity and a lot of people don't do, okay? And hence you have these problems, all right? So what we are looking at is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? All right, but you got to remember, this was under a different dispensation when it was faith and works. Today we are saved by grace through faith. Okay, you got to remember that. But, but, as it says in 1 Timothy, before we get to uh, uh, reading there in Exodus chapter 20, go to 1 Timothy chapter 1. We're, we're going to return to 1 Timothy chapter 1 at the close of this video. Okay, but 1 Timothy chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, the law, okay, the law, uh, verses 8. On to verse 10. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. For unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For man slayers. Isn't that interesting? Murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Hmm. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Sodomites. For men stealers. For liars. For perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Okay? All right? The law is there to tell you what sin is, to keep you away from it. The law in, its, in and of itself is a good thing. Amen. Because it tells you what sin is. It tells you, stay away from that. Okay? All right? But see, if you're not saved, you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling within you. 
And when the Lord saves you, he dwells within you personally. He is that seal until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? The one who wrote the law dwells in you, and he will guide you into all truth through the authorized version of the scriptures. You're lost. You're being judged by the law. Yeah, you are. Okay? That's what Paul just said. All right? Okay? So, Exodus 20, we're going to read only on to verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay? Now, for us, what does that mean for our instruction in righteousness? Egypt is a type of the world. Okay? And Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Okay? Our instruction in righteousness is God has taken us who are saved out of the world and he's guiding us onto the promised land, okay? Which is being with the Lord himself, okay? Being with the Lord himself, that is his reward, he himself, okay? So, let's continue. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord G, gods. Okay? Gods like Thor, gods like this and that. Yeah! But also, something that takes precedent in your life above God. Many idols. There are many things that people make little G gods out of. Okay? Genesis chapter 3. Just one verse. Verse 5. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now context, what is he talking about? Like all the Egyptian gods, all the Roman Catholic gods that they have affixed names from the church of the living God. Okay? Yes. But, what is God unto you? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to follow, like that idiot, Burton C. Bell. Okay? Um, he, he openly said, I, I follow my heart. Well, you're a fool. Fool has sent his heart, there is no God. And only a fool follows his own heart. Okay? All right? <laughs> okay, but thou shalt have no other gods before me. What other gods is being spoken about? Other than the obvious fake, fake gods, like such as Egypt and stuff like that. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yourself. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what feels good to me. I'm going to follow my heart. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah? Yeah. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Again, talking about the molten gods. And that is what that's addressing. But there's more to it than that, dear friend. You got to watch out for people who say that there is only one way this can be taken. Context. Dispensationally, yes. Our instruction in righteousness. Okay? There are some people out there who worship other gods and have nothing to do with the little statues. Okay? What does TV offer you? Some of these people look at these Hollywood movie stars or these sports athlete, athletes as if they were gods. I don't worship them. Why are you following them so uh, vigilantly? Diligently. <laughs> Why? Yeah. And then of course... You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You know what is good. You know what is evil. No, you don't. The only one who knows what is truly good and what is truly evil is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And he tells you so in his book, the authorized version of the scriptures. You want to hear it? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Look at the spread here. That is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Now, think about that. 
Think about that. Okay, look at that verse. The likeness of anything that is in heaven above, okay, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Hmm. Hmm. That's a broad spectrum of things to stay away from. What am I talking about? Hold your place here and go to Colossians, of course, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. And you're going to see how people will go to great lengths to justify sin. How do they do it? How do they go to justify sin? Colossians chapter 2, just one verse to start. Verse 8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. After the rudiments of the world. And the world says it's okay for you to groom a little child, a little boy, as if he were a little girl. Hey, Jonathan, you see this boy? It would take... <laughs> There's more hope of my good friend from England getting saved than you, buddy. Okay? There's more hope for that guy. And there's not much hope there than there is for you, Mr. Jonathan, who's doing that to his own son! Oh. Oh. Oh, I guess so. Oh. But what do they do to justify their sin? They use philosophy and vain deceit. You see some of these people, especially these Christians, that go about to justify sin. They become quite the philosopher. The uh, easy believism heretics. They're, they're pretty good philosophizers, aren't they? They really are. You listen to uh, the Inquisitor from New York, if you can stand him. Um, he, he's quite a philosopher. He really is. He really is. And so is his, uh, the one provincial from England. Quite a philosopher. Quite a philosopher. <laughs> the hunter of souls, that is. Yeah. Yeah. But now let's skip a little to just two verses in Colossians, verses 18 and 19. Let no man beguile you, you of your reward in a voluntary humility of worshiping of angels. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Don't worry, we're getting the Romans. Hold on, brother. Okay, go back to Colossians chapter 2. Uh, where did we pick? Uh, verse uh, uh, 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility of worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And what do we do? What do we do for the worshiping of angels? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Worshiping of angels. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And the world... <laughs> The world will call that Jonathan scoundrel a minister of righteousness because he loves his children so much and he's going to let them do what they want to do. Because my son was, whether either, you know, whether that's a work of fiction, the point is he's parading his son around as a little girl. Throwing dung at God, basically, is what he's doing. And that little boy. That little boy, 
Cards are stacked against him. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. Amen. Yes, it is. And because of Christianity, the uh, limiting God thing, a lot of people like, yeah, right. They have trivialized that. Okay. But see, there comes a point when someone crosses a line where they can't go back because they, their mind is so warped. They can't even blush. Can't even blush. I don't have kids. I don't understand. I, I, I can't understand because I don't have children. How could you do that to your son? How could you do that to your daughter? I, I don't understand. How could you do that? How? Ignorance on the father's part is not there. That, the guy's not ignorant. Nor is that stupid woman of his. Take a fence, take a gate. You, you guys are, oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> and not holding the head, verse 19, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Okay? Now go to Romans chapter 1 which uh, some of you right away were thinking of. But the philosophy, philosophy. Sinners who want to hold on to their sin, uh, especially of the religious aspect, become philosophers. Okay? Again, uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse, uh, verse 4 again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Romans chapter 1, 21 unto 27. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their, ima in their imaginations and their foolish hearts. Heart was darkened. Foolish, behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. Because the fool has said in his heart there is no God. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Who say in the heart there is no God. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Hmm. And Leviathan, the piercing serpent, that's in the waters. Hmm. Worshipping of angels, the stupid little bird of the Trinity. <coughs> hmm. Or the phoenix with the egg and the rebirth kind of thing. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. And right there, other gods before me who worshiped the creature more than the creator, worshiping themselves a creature but you also got to remember, Satan himself is also a creature. He is not a creator. He is not the creator, excuse me. Okay, he isn't. Okay, he is a created being just like you and I. In that he is created. He is uh, the anointed cherub. Okay, a lot more powerful than any mortal man. <laughs> yeah, but in the fact that Satan is a created being, okay, so they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, Satan. And Satan wants to be God. I will be like the Most High. So when you are worshiping yourself, thinking you know what is right and wrong, uh, you're being like your father, the devil, Satan. You're worshiping yourself. You are your own God. You have a false God before the Lord, yourself. That, see, that's why repentance is so important and why it's necessary for salvation. And that is why the easy believism devil likes to whoop, 
right over that nasty little repentance because they're their own God. They save themselves by their own belief. Jonathan there, if that's his name, and his disgusting wife, okay, who's allowing, you people are allowing this. Worshiping and serving the creature more than the creator. Let's keep reading though. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Lesbians. I one time had met a sodomite woman when I was talking to her. She brought, she, a lost sodomite woman who looked more manly than a man. Her name was Tracy. Okay? Her name was Tracy. But she said to me, it says man shall not lay with mankind. It doesn't say anything about women. Yeah, yeah, that happened while I was on the job, when I used to work in the secular field, okay? That, that happened when I was at the pizza place. I was stunned. I was that, you know, we're told to be instant, in season and out of season. When you got a female sodomite quoting to you uh, out, of uh, out of Leviticus, uh, it says, that man shall not lay with mankind. It says nothing about women. <laughs> it's like, wow. That, that took me off guard. That, that's like, whoa. And the sad thing is, she saw that, that I wasn't expecting that, okay? That's only happened to me once, okay? <laughs> if it happens again, I'll be, I'll, I'll, you know. And unfortunately, at that time, I couldn't, like, pounce on it like I ought to have because I was at, at work, you know? But right there, okay, verse 26 that's addressing you women who think it's okay because it doesn't say anything about well, womankind, right? You're mankind. Woman, you came of man. Okay? Woman means of man. Ooh, some of you feminazis, you hate that. Don't you? Don't you? And remember these feminazis, brethren, when I believe... The Jesuits may select for us our very first female president. Okay? I hope I'm wrong. Okay? But there's there's you lesbians. Okay? No getting around it. Verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. People like to bring up AIDS. Lord didn't stop it. Lord didn't stop it. But I believe AIDS was a man-made disease, a biological weapon. People like to bring that up about AIDS. And there are many sexually transmitted diseases that Sodomite and also other things, of course, but they received the recompense of their error that was meat. Okay? All right? And the sad thing is that little boy, the odds on that little boy growing up to be a Sodomite are just incredibly increased. And you have a father. Not only promoting abomination, but making money off of it. <clears throat> you scumbag! You scoundrel! Shame on you! Shame on you! How, how could you do that to how could you? Back to Exodus chapter 20. If you loved your children, you'd bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But you're bringing up them kids under Satan's wing. 
There's hope for them kids. There is hope. Because one day they're going to know the difference. One day they're going to know the truth. They're going to know it. They're going to hear it. What are they going to do with it? Because train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The odds on them getting saved past that time of the age of accountability, whenever that may be, is a lot less likely because of how they're being brought up. Think about it. To the kids today, you, you hand them a health phone. Go sit and play a video game. Watch TV. Okay? The children of today are being made little devil monsters by parents who want to live vicariously through their children. Little monsters are being created today, people. Little arrogant children whose eyes are lofty, who do not bless their mother and curse their father. I might have that backwards, but you get the point. Like I told you, that poor little boy, that poor little boy, the odds on that little boy growing up to be a sodomite are <laughs> unfortunately, okay? Oh, he was born that way. You know, every one of us is going to give an account of, uh, of himself to God. I got my things to uh, give an account for at the judgment seat of Christ. And so do you, Church of the Living God. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I sure as Hades would not want to be that Mr. Jonathan. Or whoever his name is, that father. At the great white throne of judgment, having to answer for how he, for what he did to his children. I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't, I don't even want to imagine what that would be like. Okay? All right? I, I, I don't even want to imagine that, man. Can you imagine? Stand for the Lord having to give an account for that? Hey, I got my stuff. I'm going to have the judgment seat. Okay, and so do you, brother, sister, Church of the Living God. We all do. Okay? Unless, of course, you're from somewhere from the Northeast and are perfect and better than all men. Of course. But, you know, you know, we got our stuff we're going to give an account for at the judgment seat. That guy, man. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Jealous God. How could God be jealous? How can God be jealous and be so, so mighty and powerful? Nah. How, how can you love someone you're afraid of, right? See, you're, you're making arguments from a Jesus who is not the Jesus of the scriptures, dear friend. God is a jealous God. Let's talk about that very quickly. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 19. Go to Luke chapter 19. Go to Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Just one verse to start. Verse 14. Now you got to remember, this is said in context before the death, burial, and resurrection. In context, it was while he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to remember that. If you want to pause this video and read the entire context of Luke chapter 19, go, go ahead. But remember, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. While he was still offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven, that's what the kingdom of heaven is, where the Lord Jesus Christ ruling as king on a throne, he was offering that unto the Jewish people. Okay, you got to remember that. But the point is, verse 14, but his citizens hated him. And sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Hmm. Now skip down to verses 26 and 27. 
For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Ooh. Now, this is in context, uh, a reference on to what it will be like in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Kingdom of heaven. The actual physical, literal kingdom that is at Jerusalem with the Lord Jesus Christ himself in the flesh, sitting on a throne, ruling as the son of David, king of, king of the Jews, king of everybody. Okay? That's what that's talking about. All right? Here's the thing. God is a jealous God. It doesn't matter if you want to believe on him or not. Brad, what you Shut up. It doesn't matter. He created you. He is your God. Okay? You have life today because of him. You have light in your eyes because of, because of him. You have breath in your lungs because of him. Okay? He is God. He created you. It doesn't matter if you want to accept that or not. He is your God. Okay? You might not want nothing to do with him. You might not want to have anything to do with you. But he created you. He is your God. He is your king. No matter what. Okay? Your desire in that respect is irrelevant for those of you who reject him. Because at the end of the day, he's, he's the one that you're going to give an account to, dear friend. The Lord Jesus Christ, who you mock, who you spit upon, who you throw dung at when you're saying that, oh, I was born gay, or my little boy was that should have been born a girl. You're throwing dung at God. You're saying that God made a mistake. How dare you? How dare you? The same one that you're accusing all that stuff is the same one that you're going to give an account to. Okay? See, in that respect, what you think is irrelevant. He is still your God. He is still your king. He, he don't have a relationship with you personally. But it is before him you are going to give an account. You understand? And he made you to have a relationship with you. You know, when someone asks you, when someone asks you, why did God make me? Why did God do this? Why, why, why? That's a very simple question to answer. Uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Just one verse. Okay? And this I have seen with my own eyes has shut people up who has asked me that. Why did God create me? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Well, then God must be a sadist because he wanted me to be created. No, he wanted, he wants to, wanted to have a relationship with you. Okay? He's a jealous God. The God who created you has every right to be irate at you for he gave you life and allowed you to come from the womb. Okay? Evolution cannot explain how the bones grow in the womb. Okay? If you're an evolutionist, I'm going to be blunt with you, you're stupid. Okay? And stupidity is willful ignorance. Okay? You're stupid. Alright? But evolution cannot explain how the bones grow in the womb. Okay? The Lord who allowed you to be in your mother's womb, okay? He created you. He brought you into this life. He has given you <sighs> breath. You have light behind your in your eyes, okay? You have life, okay? You were made in the image of God. You have a spirit. You have a soul. You have a body, just like God does, okay? He created you for a fellowship. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, okay? Yes, he did. So when his creation would rather go after the creature than the creator, and worship themselves as their own God. Okay? It's like, I, I made, I, what, are you, what are you doing? 
See, what happens is uh, a lot of the lost world and a lot of these stupid Christians, and I'm being polite, uh, like to confuse envy for jealousy. Envy for jealousy. And uh, my best friend is a stickler on that. He, um, he might have done, I, I'm sorry, brother, if you see this and you will. Uh, if you have made a video on that, I don't remember it right offhand. If you have, put it in the description box, okay? But um, there is a difference between envy and jealousy, okay? There's a big difference. And that's what uh, Christians in the lost world like to do. They like to confuse envy for jealousy. They're two different things, okay? They are two different things. All right. All right. But God created you because he wanted to, okay? God created you because he wanted to. And when you as his creation go astray from him, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, Psalm 2, Psalm 2. Two. Not Psalm chapter 2. Psalm 2. If my fingers will get us there. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Saying, Christ means anointed one. Okay? Jesus, Jehovah saves, the anointed one, Christ, okay? Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Yes, get us out of the way. Cease the Holy One from Israel from being before us. Yeah. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. <laughs> Think about that. These people who say, we will not have this man to rule over us. And you're going to stand and give an account to the same one who you said, uh, he's not going to rule over us. <laughs> See? It's a, <laughs> and the Lord's going to laugh. It's like, <laughs> you, you really thought you were going to get away from me? You really thought? You really thought you could have nothing to do with me? Now you're going to give an account, boy. Yeah. They shall speak unto them, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. I gave you life. And this is what you did? You raised up your children in abomination? which I gave you as a reward, a fruit of the womb, and you made your children into that! And vexed them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, the turning point in this psalm, verse 6. Here's the mercy. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, and I don't mean that devil carter. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise. Now therefore, wise, wisdom, equated. What is wisdom? And unto man he said, The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. Okay? So wise, wisdom, the fear of the Lord. There is also another wisdom that is not, that doesn't come from, down from heaven, but is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish, the wisdom of man. Okay? But see, wise, fear the Lord. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun. 
lest he be angry. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Are you getting a little of the gist of what it means that God is jealous God? Hmm? Are you? And, and this thing about a rod of iron. Okay? Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Okay? Who is going to be ruling with the rod of iron? The sweet Jesus who doesn't get angry and who doesn't judge, who loves you unconditionally, I'll blow it out your ear end. Okay? Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 29. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, Jezebel, a type of the Roman Catholic Church, Jezebel, the wife of Ahab, who controlled her husband, who wore the pants in the family. That's what happens when the order that God has established, God, man, woman, child, is reversed when it becomes God, woman, children, pet, man. See? Okay? Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophet, a prophetess, excuse me, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. Oh boy, there's your, there's your sweet, lovely Jesus. Yeah, who is God our Father, who is the just judge of all the earth. Yeah. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, showing you what dispensation revelation is for, okay? To him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Who has the rod of iron. Who just said he was going to kill their children with death. As the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. And I will give him. A, and I will give him the morning star. Himself. Not son of the morning. But the morning star himself. You read a Bible. Most of them have a reference in Isaiah chapter 12. O Luce, uh, 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer son of the morning. That's what the scriptures say. Others have morning star. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Or day star. Who will rise in your hearts. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bibles tell you that Jesus Christ was cast out of heaven. Or fallen from heaven. Don't read a Bible. Read the scriptures. Okay? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And then you would go to see Rod of Iron a couple more times in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 12. About how Israel, the, the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ... God our Father, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh, is come of Judah, the tribe of Judah, from Israel. The woman that is being spoken of in Revelation chapter 12, don't let the Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, deceive you. Okay? That's Israel, not Mary. And then, of course, the second coming, our Lord Jesus Christ coming as judge to take vengeance. Okay? With the rod of iron, you read about that in Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. Okay, God is a God is a righteous judge, 
And God has every right to be jealous over you, his creation, going and fornicating with the devil. He has every right. See, what you're, a lot of you are doing are confusing envy with jealousy. Okay? But now go back to Exodus chapter uh, 20, verse 5 again. Thou shalt not bow thyself, down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So then, like the beautiful conversation that I had last night, the question comes up, well, how much of this is the children paying for the sins of their fathers? Now, we just see right there in verse 5, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay? Of them that hate me. Now, if you were to go, okay, to, uh, where is that? Is uh, Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34, you see this again. Verses 4 under verse 7. This is after the debacle with the golden calf. Moses came down from the mount with the two tables of stone, the Ten Commandments, and saw Israel fornicating with the golden calf that Aaron made. With, and Aaron in his brilliance is like, oh, I put it, they gave me the stuff and I put it in and whoop, up came this calf. It's like, Oy vey, Aaron, that, that brilliant, brilliant, okay? This is after the debacle of the golden calf. Uh, Moses saw what they were doing. He smashed the, the, the two tablets and grind that thing in the powder and make them drink it, okay? This is afterwards. Verse 4 and verse 7. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses, uh, Exodus 34, verses 4 and verse 7. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Hmm. And interesting, uh, in the book of Matthew, they make the note that it was 14 generations 14 generations onto this, 14 generations onto that, 14 generations onto that, okay, about the coming of Christ, 14 generations, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, okay? So somewhere in that time that you got 4, 8, 12, 4 years, plus an additional 2, okay? 14 generations, all right? Very interesting to note that. But what... What is this actually talking about? Now, let's, let's a little bit more here. Verses 12 on to verse 16 in Exodus chapter 34. Take heed to thyself. Because every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. This was a different dispensation. you got to remember. What changed is the crucifixion, the bloodshed on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection. That's what changed. Okay? Got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be a snare in the midst of thee. But ye shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. We've already explained that. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. Okay, what are we reading to? Under verse 16. And thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, 
and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go a whoring after their gods. Let's read verse 10. Thou, uh, 17, thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Talking about molten gods. But see, these people who have made idols of their children, creating these little monsters, they are their own god. They are their own God because they know what is good and evil. You see? Now, let's go to ex, uh, Exodus. Ezekiel chapter 18. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're not, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. What ought to be happening? Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Which I read this morning. Which I read this morning. We are to bring the children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. The father and the mother are supposed to be raising the children. Okay? But train, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Psalm 78, verses 1 on verse 8. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. This is what ought to be happening today. Fathers and mothers ought to be raising their children in the scriptures. Okay? Look, if you, if you are want to become a doctor, learn how to set bones, sew up things, remove kind of things, that, that's okay. Yeah, okay? Yeah. But, you know, basic education, you can learn math, biology, lots of science, true history, everything you can learn from the scriptures as your textbook. Absolutely you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? I understand uh, the beginning of the school system, but the Jesuits have long uh, overcome this school system. All these schools are run by the Jesuits. It doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if it's openly a Jesuit school or not. The Jesuit order has infiltrated virtually everything. And the Jesuit order, especially here in America, they run all the schools. They run all the schools. I don't care which one it is. You got a Jesuit. There are Jesuits in that school. There are Jesuits in that school. There are Jesuits. I'm pointing to indigenous places in Woodstock that you don't know about. And there's Jesuits in that school. Okay? There, there are Jesuits all over in the school system. Okay? The father and the mother are supposed to be teaching the children and bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You can learn grammar, English, pronunciation, mathematics, science, um, history. Uh, geography, biology. You can learn it in the scriptures. It's all here. Okay? It's all here. All right? So the fathers and mothers ought to be raising the children. Okay? But see, when you hand them over to the Jesuits and you hand them over to the devices of a foolish shepherd, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. The dark sayings are the words of God that people who do not have the spirit of truth to guide them into all truth who can understand or recognize. Okay? Not that these sayings of Scripture are dark, meaning in a bad light. Absolutely not. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And in order to truly understand Scripture, you need to be saved. You need to have the spirit of truth. And the Lord is that spirit to guide you into all truth. You lost people. You read the scriptures. Okay. Uh, you can get some of it. You can get actually a good deal of it. But the deeper things of scripture you cannot receive because you're not saved. Okay. A lost person can read the scripture enough to get broken and come to repentance and be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. When they come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him, crawl upon his name. As a lost person myself, the Lord brought me unto himself through the book of Romans. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? Then he saves you, seals you, once saved, always saved, unto the day of redemption, and he will guide you into all truth. Okay? So the dark sayings are those who do not have the Spirit of God, who cannot understand the, true, uh, the truth of, the deep truth of Scripture, because they don't have the Spirit of God within them, guiding them onto, into all truth. You understand? 
Verse 3, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. That the generation to come might know them. Know what? The words of the Lord. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Note the should there in verse 6. Note that. Okay? Note that. That they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart alight, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. That's what ought to be happening. That's what ought to be happening. But is it? No. No. Well, I, uh, I send my children to the church and Sunday school. Yeah, and you have a Jesuit trained person tra uh, teaching your children in a, a church building at a Sunday school. That's what ought to be happening. But the opposite has happened. Okay? Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14. Verses 18 on to verse 24. Now, what's significant about... Come on, get there already. Numbers chapter 14, verses 18 on to verse 24. What's significant of this is, this is after... The people brought up a bad report of the promised land that the Lord was going to bring them into. Okay? In Numbers chapter 13, Moses, at the behest of the Lord, sent spies out into the land to, to view the promised land. And they brought back grapes, you know, on their shoulders. They cut down a thing and, uh, you know, to bring back the report thereof. And they said, yes, the land is a land flowing with milk and honey. But... Giants are there. The Anakims are there or whatever. And uh, they, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. We can't take this over. You know, they brought up a bad report. The Lord was like, look, here's the promised land. Trust me. Put legs into it and go get it. I'm going to give it to you. Trust me. Go, go do it. Let's go. We're going to go. Let's go get the promised land. I'm going to give it to you. But see, the Lord sent out these people uh, Moses, at the behest of the Lord, sent out these people. Why? Because a majority of them, almost all of them, didn't really trust the Lord. They wanted to stone because uh, you look at uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lift up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and they wanted to go back to Egypt. Because of the lies of the people who brought back the uh, bad report to the land that they couldn't go do it. And you're right, they couldn't. But see, the Lord was with them. The Lord said, that's the promised land. I'm giving it to you. Trust me and let's go do this. Okay? You know that proverbial getting out of the boat? Okay? But they didn't. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Yahshua, the son of Nun, Joshua, the son of Nun, okay? Those were the only two. That entire generation that, you know, didn't believe on the Lord, that he was, he was able to do what he said he was going to do, that generation died in the wilderness, the 40-year wilderness. And the children were the ones that went in and got it, okay? But Numbers chapter 14, verses 18 on to verse 24. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. We hear this again. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation. 
Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt, even until now. And the Lord said, that was Moses talking, by the way, and the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But, as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But say, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit which him and with, with him, and hath followed me fully. I will bring, him will I bring in to the land where into he went, and his seed shall possess it. And of course, Joshua, the son of Nun, was. The children of that generation were the ones that went in to see the promised land, who received it. The fathers didn't. You might be saying, well, okay, Brad, but see, that's a contradiction, isn't it? What, you know, you're saying the, the children are, you know, onto the third and onto the fourth generation of them that hate me going to visit the iniquity of the fathers. What's going on? What's going on? And look, God's not the author of confusion. Go to Exodus chapter 18. Now, oh, one second. Okay, get, get to the actual camera now. We're not going to be looking at that guy's stuff anymore. Ex, uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. I already talked about this in another video, but we're going to go through it a little deeper today. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 18. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 23. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, What mean ye? They, that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Okay? What does that mean? Okay? Because of what the children, fathers have done, the children are reaping, are doing the same thing. Right? They're reaping what the fathers have sown. Verse 3. As I live, said the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, this is under a different dispensation where eternal security was not there. Okay? Once saved, always saved was not in the dispensation of the law. Don't believe the lying, uh, easy believism heretics who say that it was just believed from beginning to end. Don't believe them. They're lying to you. Okay? Under the law, it was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Eternal security is that seal until the day of redemption, the Lord living in you. Okay? That is your eternal security, the Lord himself. Okay? In this dispensation, that wasn't available. The, the Lord could indwell someone, yes, but he can come and go, come and go. Okay? Not a permanent seal. Okay? Under the law... You, you sin, the Lord could depart from you. Today, you sin. The Lord's not going anywhere. He's just going to chase you and make you feel like a turd. Okay? And praise the Lord for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? But, let's continue. But if a man be just, and do that which is lawful and right, and hath not eaten upon the mountain, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, Neither have come near to a menstruous woman. These are all works. Note that. Okay? And that this is our instruction in righteousness. And hath not oppressed any, but hath restored to the debtor his pledge, hath spoiled none by violence, hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. He hath not given, he, hath, he that hath not given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase, giving to people with expecting them to give back. Okay. That hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man. These are all works. Okay. Hath walked in my statutes, 
and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just, he shall surely live, saith the Lord God. If he beget a, if he beget a son that is a robber, train up a child in the way he should go, okay? A shedder of blood, and that doeth the like to any one of these things, and that doeth not any of those duties, but even hath eaten upon the mountains, and defiled his neighbor's house, hath oppressed the poor and needy, hath spoiled by violence, hath not restored the pledge, hath, and hath not lift up his eyes to the idols, hath committed abomination, hath given forth upon usury, and hath taken increase, shall he then live? He shall not live. He hath done all these abominations. He shall surely die, his blood shall be upon him. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to the Lord. Okay? Whether at the judgment seat of Christ, for us who are saved, or you get left behind or whatever, then at the great white throne. Okay? The children of that channel are one day going to hear the truth. Okay? Right now they're being brought up in abomination. Okay? They don't know better. But one day, one day, the child who is being raised in abomination, is going to hear the truth of the gospel, is going to hear the truth of Jesus Christ someday. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. Okay? Unless the Lord decides to take the child before they know, can understand, because see, those children are being brought up in abomination. Okay? Okay? So, because they are being brought up in that abomination... The likelihood of them departing from that abomination is increasingly less and less. It could happen with a miracle of the Lord, a miracle of proclamation of hearing the truth and of repentance. Yes, yes it can. Okay, It's possible. But the longer those children are being brought up in abomination, it becomes less probable. Okay? Okay? But every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. The true mark of someone is what you do with truth when you hear it. Are you going to stop your ears and gnash with your teeth? Are you going to be cut to the heart and gnash with your teeth? Or are you going to be pricked in your heart? It's like, what, what, what do I do now? What must I do to be saved? Or, hey, get out of here, God, your God doesn't, your God, I don't want your God. My Jesus, he's not like that. Yeah, your Jesus is Satan, man. What do you do with truth? Hey, John, is that your name? The father of that family? You're going straight to hell, buddy, and you're going to pay for what you're doing to your own children. Personally, for knowing what you, you you're not you're not innocent. You know the truth, and you're allowing your children to go through. You're doing that to your children. God have mercy on your wicked soul, boy. But those children, there's hope for them. There's hope for them, because they will hear the truth eventually. What happens when they hear that truth? Because of their training. And upbringing, are they going to go as they always have gone and scoff and be cut to the heart and stop their ears and gnash with their teeth? Probably. Is it possible that they might be cut to the heart, uh, pricked in the heart and actually be saved? That's possible. But the longer you continue in abomination like that, the longer those children are being told it's okay to be to dress up like a little girl when you're a little boy and there's nothing wrong with it, the longer you grow in that, the harder it becomes. So see, here in uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, okay, when you hear the truth, what do you do with it? Huh? What do you do with it? Verse 14, now lo, if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sins which he hath done, and considereth, and doeth not such like, that 
poor little boy who's being paraded around as a little girl. He hears the truth. He's pricked to the heart. Hopefully. Okay? And then he steps back and realizes. Wow. Wow. I, wow. Wow. I'm not supposed to, wow. Wow. And my father allowed this. My father taught me this. What must I do? See, that's what we hope for, for like a little boy, like for them children. That's what we hope for. That father and mother, that father, he ain't no man. That man probably beat me to a pulp, but I tell you what, he'd get a good get a shot in the stones, boy. If he has any. Okay? This is the hope for the children. That when they hear the truth of the gospel, the true gospel of the true Jesus Christ of the authorized version. Not one of these devils, not one of these devil easy believism heretics or one of these church building Christians. No, but someone of the church of the living God comes to one of these children and hear the truth and they get pricked in the heart. That's the hope. Now, lo, if he beget a son that seeth all his father's sins which he hath done, and considereth, and doeth not such like, that hath not eaten upon the mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hath not defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath oppressed any, hath not withholden the pledge, neither hath spoiled by violence, but hath given his bread to the hungry, these are all works, and hath covered the naked with a garment, and the works of the law don't save us today. You're not saved by works today. Okay? You gotta remember. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Again, this is instruction in righteousness, okay? That hath taken off his hand from the poor, that hath not received usury nor increase, hath executed my judgments, hath walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father, he shall surely live. So see, that's the hope. Those children are young enough where they don't know. They're going to know one day. They're going to know and hear the truth. There ain't going to be one innocent person standing at the great white throne of judgment. Okay? There ain't going to be one. All right? There ain't going to be one innocent person who's going to be able to look at the Lord and say, I never heard the way of salvation. It's not going to happen. Okay? Those children are going to hear the true gospel. Hopefully, before one of these scumbag, easy believism heretics come along and mess their heads up even worse. Well, love is love. God's okay with love. God's a God of love. Oy vey. I'll tell you what, brethren. For those children, we ought to pray that one of us of the Church of the Living God get to them before. Because I'll tell you. If an easy believism scoundrel devil gets to one of them children before someone of the church of the living God, they're done. They're done. That's it. They're done. They're done. That little boy, an easy believism heretic coming around saying, just believe. Okay? But you, you, you probably shouldn't dress like a girl. But just believe and you're safe. That they're done. They're done. They're done because the easy believism heretic hates scriptural repentance, which is brokenness of your self-righteousness. Okay, that's what scriptural repentance is for us today in this dispensation. And the easy believism heretic hate that as well as most of the church building Christians. Okay. Christianity, get a hold of one of them kids. They're done. They're absolutely done. So we ought to pray for those children that someone of the church of the living God get to those kids before the Christians do. But see, they're being brought up in abomination in the ways of Satan. It doesn't look good for them kids, but there's still hope. There's still hope. You see? So whenever they reach that age, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that little boy, 
that little boy, Eddie or Edie or whatever, that little boy, because, because of that abomination, I'm telling you, that little boy is going to be made is going to be made more aware a lot quicker than his sisters, and I believe there's a, another boy that they're allowing to be remain a boy. Okay, but he's going to be more. He's going to he's going to be at that age of accountability. I believe more sooner than the others because of the level of the abomination that that little boy needs to know soon. Okay, that and that's why our Lord is merciful. It's like, little boy, okay, your, your father is doing you very wicked. Very wicked. And if that, that man were to actually, but see, if that man were to actually come to repentance, praise the Lord for it. But see, you got to remember King Manasseh. King Manasseh, one of the worst devilish kings in the history of, of Israel. He's in heaven. He got saved. Okay? He's in heaven. He turned things around. But see, what happened, because of the years of abomination as when, when he was an enemy of the Lord, the years of the abominations that he allowed the children of Israel to go through, even though he himself is in heaven right now, got right with the Lord, because of that sin that he allowed in Israel that continued to a place where people could not go back from it, see. Even though he himself is right with the Lord and is in heaven waiting for us right now, okay? The sins of Manasseh, the people paid for, okay? Because even though he himself got right and he himself wanted to right his own mistakes, but see, the indoctrination, the pounding, the depression, pressing down of abomination has its cost. Verse 18. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which was not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. And Christianity says this in a lot of lost people. Yet ye say, why? Why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son hath done, okay, we just read about how the iniquity will be visited upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Okay, remember, think about Manasseh. Okay, what he did unto the children of Israel. Okay, the child individually can get saved, but that child may still bear the repercussions of the father's sin. Do you understand? Okay, for example. That little boy, hopefully, he gets... Uh, one, one second, one second. Getting a little hot in here. That little boy, let's say he gets saved. G comes out of it, truly saved of the church of the living God. But see, that stigma of you you were that little boy who grow, grew up thinking he was a girl. You know, the sin of his father. Because his father didn't bring him up in the admonition of the Lord. The Lord will forgive him. Uh, he gets saved, sealed until he's going to heaven. Once saved, always saved. The Lord forgives him. But see, that branding, that stigma from the world will not be forgotten. So in that sense, yes, yes, while he himself is forgiven. You see how that works? Okay? I'm saved, going to heaven. Once saved, always saved, sealed until the day of redemption. The sins of my past, Though I'm forgiven for them, every once in a while come up to haunt me, okay? Memories and stuff like that. Yes, I'm forgiven. I'm going to heaven when I die. But see, some of those sins, the consequences. The consequences. God can God save you. Go to heaven when you die. Once saved, always saved. Eternally secure. God is not always going to remove the consequences. Okay? 
God is not always going to remove those consequences, brethren. Okay? That's what's being talked about there. Okay? But then again, if that child doesn't, doesn't go to the Lord because of how he was brought up, then that snowball effect just continues going downhill. You know what I'm saying? Let's continue. Yet ye say, why doth not the Father bear the iniquity? Why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. Different dispensation under the law for us today. Okay? The Son... Okay, he realized, he, he reaches that point of accountability, and he's like, my father allowed this, this happen, I was growing up like this, I, I, no, Lord, I don't want this, I repent, please, save me, forgive me, I see what my father has done, please, forgive me, okay, he got right with the Lord, all right? He's not going to be, you know, the sins of the Father. He might, because of the sins of the Father, that stigma of what once was, which the enemies like to hold against people, will probably stay with him all of his life. Because his Father has prostituted him all over YouTube. Lord have mercy on you, pal. Lord have mercy on you. But see, that might remain with that boy forever. As long as he's on earth, not forever. Okay, but see, if he gets saved, he'll be right with the Lord going to heaven. But that stigma, see, you see, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. But there's a catch to that, isn't there? What is the catch? The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Oh, see, you guys who like to go to this about, oh, don't judge, don't judge. You, you don't like to wrestle with this, do you? Okay? All right? The father may is a wicked devil guiding his family on to hell. The son uh, comes to the age of accountability, gets pricked to the heart. What must I do to be saved? The Lord saves him. And then he realizes, it's like, okay, what his father has done that... That stigma might stick with him, but he himself, that child, he sees it's like, whoa, you know, dad, this, what, what have you, uh, look, I, I should have never, I'm, I, I'm, I, Lord, forgive me. What, why? What are, you, what are you doing? I want nothing to do with it. Okay. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Okay. Everyone shall give an account of himself to God. Okay. All right? But see, you bring up a, a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. Okay? So, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? So, when the child hears, or when the uh, child is at that age of accountability and doesn't get pricked to the heart, but cut to the heart, and continues on, then up there, there's that cycle going on. You see how that works? You see how that works. Okay? Verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, different dispensation, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. And here's what the Heretics like to harp on. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? That's repent. That's repent. Which Christianity isn't going to offer those children, especially not the easy believers and devils. Okay? You see, every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Okay? But there's also another aspect that must be brought up about this. Go to John chapter 9. Every child that you look upon, 
You know, it's like John chapter 9. John chapter 9. Now, yes, you got to remember what we're going to look at. We're going to look at John chapter 9. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Yes, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes, this is when the Lord was working signs and miracles to show that he was the Mashiach. Yes, yes, this was in context of offering unto the Jews the kingdom of heaven. Yes, yes, but the principle is. For example, what about the child that's born with Down syndrome? What about the child that's born with one arm or some kind of birth defect? Well, what were the sins of the fathers? What was the sins of the father and the mother, right? And, well, what could they, they could have done? Could have smoked pot. They could have taken drugs. They could have done had a poor diet. Whatever, okay? Okay? All right? And that, that's a viable thing. But there are cases, dear brethren, there are, where parents, fathers, mothers, you know, the mother uh, doing right, uh, eating healthy, staying away from things, but yet the child is still born with some kind of a defect. That happens, okay? That happens. The child is born with a physical defect or a mental defect or something like that. And, and not at the sins of the father or the mother. Okay? They did what was right. Okay? They, uh, they weren't, they, they, you know, they didn't mess around. They didn't, uh, the woman didn't put any poison in there. Got it cleaned up. The father didn't have messed up chromosomes or whatever. But yet the child was still born with a defect. And then they're like, well, Somebody had to mess up. Not always so, brethren. You got to watch out to not become hardened in that. And, and what you, well, Brad, you can't be too soft. You're right. And that's my problem. I've been too soft before. And it's virtually almost every single time it's bitten me in the buttocks or I had my hands spat on or bitten. You're right. But see, you got to guard against being too hard on that. John 9, verses 1 and verse 7. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And here's something that we have to consider. And Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents but that the works of God should be manif made manifest in him. Now, yes, yes, for a sign unto the Jews. Yes, 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 you're right. You're, you're right. But is that the limit of it? Is that the limit of it? Hmm? Is God miraculously healing people today like this? No, no. Could he? Yes. Is he? No, no. Okay, yes, you're right. To, you know, yeah. yeah. Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Okay, signs unto the Jews. Here, I'm the Messiah. I'm making people see. I'm raising the dead. I'm feeding 5,000 with a couple fishes and a few loaves. Okay, yes, you're right. But is that as deep as it goes? No. No, it isn't. It is. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And there it is. Again, for signs to the Jews. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Amen. But that's not, that's not the extent of it. Okay. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, he went his way therefore, and washed and came seen. And of course, this leads into what? <laughs> where they um, where he, they bring him to the council, and it's like, how do how you see? 
well, a guy named Jesus opened my eyes. <laughs> well, they didn't say it. And, uh, and then it's like, well, we are Moses' disciple. I mean, read the whole context yourself, okay? For the glory of God. And he ended up worshiping him, okay? So yes, that has to do with the, him offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Yes, but see, the point is, God can take any situation and make a murderer or make someone who is whatever into a saint. That's the point. First Timothy chapter 1 again. First Timothy chapter 1. You know what, you know, um, uh, a man born with a birth defect, you know, and the Lord saves him, there's the glory of God, saves a man with a birth defect, okay? All right? Not, maybe might not heal him, uh, actually, so that his, he grows a limb or something, but the glory of God, someone born with a birth defect, someone with Down, I knew of a Down syndrome man who was actually saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? Yes, he was actually saved. A Down syndrome man. Okay? Yes, I knew of a, a people in uh, wheelchairs, people who have uh, MS and stuff like that. Birth defects, not because of the sins of their father, of the father or the mother, just because. But see, they get saved. You see. To the glory of God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you see a child with a birth defect, and the child, the child in that on that channel doesn't have a birth defect, meaning that he should have been born of girl the Lord rebuke you but someone born with a birth defect okay maybe it's for the uh, glory of God who who uh, maybe it's for the glory of God to make him or her a saint you see first Timothy chapter 1 verses 12 on verse 17 and I think Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. He hauled um, Christians, excuse me, he hauled the church of the living God off to prisons to be killed, to hand them over. Okay? The Church of the Living God. Not Christians. Okay? <laughs> See, even I slip every once in a while. And I'm adamantly against Christianity and the term Christian. Okay? But he, he, was more, he was more zealous of the law than his fathers. Okay? And he hauled people off to prison. Okay? And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Look at verse 16. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. If God could save Paul, who by his own admission, a sinner who is chief, what? You don't think he could save you? Hmm? Are you glorifying yourself a little too much saying, I'm so bad that God can't save me? That's a form of self-glorification. Paul said he was a sinner who was chief. Paul's in heaven waiting for us. Who do you think you are? 
Yes, there are those times when people cross a line of no return. Yes, that is true. Yes, that is true. But see, that's not a gunpoint. That's because you have chosen your way. So, rather when you see some of these children, now, now it's a thing of <laughs> judgment, okay? Rather than, well, who sinned? The father or the mother? Maybe it's, okay, maybe this is an opportunity to bring glory onto the Lord by saving that little boy. Think about it. Think about it, huh? That little boy who's being paraded around as a little girl in open abomination, affront to the Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father. That little boy, Edie or Eddie, whatever his name is, actually uh, gets saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm? Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing of what the upbringing of that child is, being paraded around in abomination, and that boy grow up to be of the church of the living God, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I've seen um, some of those. I, the Lord had me to do a video on the transgender nonsense. And because of that, uh, every once in a while, a recommendation, you know, when I'm, whenever I'm on YouTube, which is not that often, um, will come up. And I've seen these detransitioning videos, a couple of them. I've, I mean, I've commented on a few of them. Um, and I've given the uh, Let Us Reason together, you know, because, okay, someone realizes that they've messed up and they're trying to correct that. Okay, okay. Give them the gospel, the true gospel. Okay? All right? You know, when someone goes to a length where they actually remove things that they shouldn't, the odds on a person like that actually getting saved are very slim. It's possible, not probable. But I've seen some of these detransitioning things. And say, you, you see them. Give them, give them, give them the gospel. Give them the gospel. Uh, get, uh, link, link the, link the, let them, let, let us reason together, you and I, if you got to. Or link something, okay? Uh, witness to these people, okay? Give them every chance, all right? And if they don't want it, that's on them, not you, okay? That's on them. That's on them. Because like the scripture said, there comes a point where the Lord says, don't pray for these people because they go so far. We are to have discernment, brethren. And we are to judge according to what? The perfect standard. So, that's going to be it for this video. This was a video that, like I said, uh, we this got brought up in conversation, a beautiful conversation about this last night. And it stuck, you know. You know, um, first thing that it's like, okay, well, who who's responsible? Well, the father and the mother, yeah, but maybe it's for the glory of God. Maybe. Okay. But i got some editing to do here, so I'm going to get this started and get this uploaded. Thank you, brethren. There's a lot of our brethren out there who are hurting and in need prayers. If you would like the body of Christ to keep you in prayer, Get a hold of me via email, and uh, we will put your prayer request uh, in the uh, community section. Okay, use that community uh, community thing for stuff like that. If you you know, if you're going through a hard time and you want the body of Christ to be made aware of it, I won't I won't do that without people's permission. There are like specifically specifically a brother of ours from Canada who really needs prayer. But uh, he hasn't given me permission. And without that, I'm not going to say publicly. Just say that there's a brother in Canada who really needs our prayers. Okay, and a brother of ours in Europe. 
you know, who was, um, who, who made a great point in an email, which also a video will be coming on that. But we need to pray for one another, brethren. We need to pray for one another. Pray for one another. It's going to be it. I love you. Thank you very much for watching this. If you're doing, we'll, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.